Welcome to Sports Line. I'm Tucker Stout. And I'm Jeffrey Harmon. And this is the Weekend Roundup. We start the roundup on Friday, where the women's basketball team started the USF Classic facing off against South Dakota Mines. The Cougars would be victorious 70-54 to behind freshman guard Kaylee Hummel's 19 points. On Saturday, the women faced off against William Jewell. They came out victorious once again, 68-53. to Senior Sam Kinnett with a double-double, and Kaylee Hummel once again coming in clutch with 18 points. This weekend, Saturday, Coup football with a huge win over Azusa Pacific, 34-21. It is the first playoff win in D2 history, and it was led by Harlan Hill candidate Max Mickey's 164 yards rushing and three touchdowns. Go. This weekend, they will face off against Harding University on Saturday at noon. Over to men's basketball. The men face off against Concordia, Wisconsin on Saturday night, posting a 165 victory. Senior Daniel Hurt led the scoring with 31 points, which is a career high for him. The men are currently in Puerto Rico preparing for a tournament down there, so let's wish them the best of luck. Also in sports, USF swimming. The girls competed in their first match ever against crosstown rival Augustana over the weekend and were victorious. 136 to 125 was the final score in that one. So, you know, we're happy for the girls and we're interested to see how well they do for the rest of the season. In other sports news, NBA basketball. The Clippers have the best start in franchise history with a 13-2 record. And they're sitting at the top of the NBA looking down on everyone else. Rise up. Also, Russell Westbrook is still killing the game, posting another triple-double. He's just so dominant right now in the NBA, and I don't think anyone can stop him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if anybody can stop him either. Uh, he's just an athletic specimen. He's a, he's a freak, and uh, we'll see. We'll see how he keeps it going. <laughs> the Sixers didn't win a game before December for the last four years and now they have won four games in before December and Impressive. this is a huge feat for them and I think Joel Embiid might Trust be the, the reason. Trust the process. Trust the process. He might be the reason that the Sixers are having such a great season so far. I mean he's an athletic big man who can do a lot for the team and it's just nice to see the Sixers doing something for once. And side note, I don't know if you knew this one, but through his first, I think it's 10 career games in the NBA, Joel Embiid has made more three-pointers than Steph Curry did in his first 10 games. As, which is insane, but I mean, a little bit of different. I feel like Steph Curry I mean, side note, I mean, it's, it's not it, the it's, biggest it's, deal, but Steph Curry came into the league as a three-point shooter, he, and Joel he, Embiid is a center. It's, it's so incredible. So it's still pretty impressive. So basically what you're saying is Joel Embiid's going to break the record for most seasons. I never said that. Okay. I'm just saying he's That's better saying. than Steph was when he first got in the Fair league. Fair enough. Fair enough. Let's go to NFL talk. Yeah. Today is the four-year anniversary of the infamous butt fumble. How about you tell the people what that is? Well, the butt fumble is probably the worst play in NFL history where One uh, of, at least. Mark Sanchez, USC quarterback, he was playing for the New York Jets at the time. He, you know, got the ball, ran, slipped, ran to his own O-lineman's butt, fumbled the ball, and lost it. And it might be one of the most embarrassing plays I've ever seen in my tenure of watching NFL games. He didn't get touched by anybody on the defense. No. So that's what made it so bad. And that's why we're still talking about it today. Like I said, four years ago. Four years but ago. But anyway, let's go on to that. Steve Smith Sr., Ravens wide out, joined the 1,000 Catch Club over the weekend. He's the 14th player all time to join the list. And interesting note, Tuck, the first player ever under six feet tall to join that kind of company. I mean, and that's really big for the NFL. I mean, you got all these really tall guys. Steve Smith stands at 5'9". And Ice I have up. seen him play live. He looks like he looks like a little person compared to everybody. I mean, towering. It's like, it's like when you go to a big city and there's a bunch of skyscrapers and then like Stuart Little's house, <laughs> you know? So it, it's pretty cool. And he's 37 years old. Think about that. Still out there with those, guys, those young guys. So. And Steve Smith doing this coming off of an a, a injury last year. Was it Achilles, I believe? Yeah, Torres Achilles. A lot of people thought he was going to retire, and, uh, and he said, I'm coming back. He's he, got a real dog in him. He said that he wasn't going to do rehab for anything, so he decided to come back for one more season, and then he got that record, and I just think it's huge for Steve Smith. It is. Ice up, son. Also in the NFL over the weekend, Cowboys rookie running back Ezekiel Elliott broke Tony Dorsett's rookie single-season rushing record only playing 11 games, Tuck. I mean, it's very impressive. We all knew Zeke was going to be a force coming into the league, but... We didn't know it was going to be like this. I mean, it's incredible seeing that he's an MVP candidate right now as a rookie. Absolutely. But there's also another rookie MVP candidate with Dak Prescott, and they happen to be on the same team. Yeah. The Cowboys are having an incredible season. 
with Romo not at the helm, which I think is a huge deal because, you know, Dak Prescott's having an incredible year as it is. Yes. And Ezekiel Elliott is just doing the work that he needs to do to get his name out there. Absolutely. Uh, they've both been playing very well. We'll, we'll see where they could take the Cowboys. In other news, soccer news, Jurgen Klinsmann, U.S. coach, fired. Jeff, how do you feel about that? I know you're a huge U.S. soccer fan. I really yeah. just want to see what your opinions are and what they have in plan for the new manager. To be honest, you know, it's just one of those things where I really don't know, Tug. Um, you know, I really don't agree with the timing of the whole thing. You know, a lot of, I follow a lot of U.S. soccer Twitters and yeah. stuff like that. A lot of people thought he should have been fired before World Cup qualifying. I mean, that'd make more sense. This yeah. and that, but to do it in the middle, I mean, yeah, I know you have like three months in between each qualifying yeah. like time, but, you know, it's just one of those things. Jurgen did a lot of good things, you know, uh, make it out of the group of death in 2014 World Cup. Mm -hmm beating Germany and Netherlands both in Europe um, brought a lot of good players up so we'll he, see you know and I, I just actually heard that the US are lining up Bruce Arena um, LA Galaxy coach and former US national team coach for the job so it's just one of those things where we're gonna have to wait and see you know we're just gonna have to rely on our young talent and see where it takes us honestly I, mean, I like the, I like the, I like the sound of that Jeff you know hopefully yeah, it's all we can do the US you know, soccer is a rising sport right now in the in America, so we'll see how it goes. But. And Tuck, we got a special treat for the people, don't we? Oh, we do. Well, hold on, I got one more thing to say. NCAA football rankings, college football playoff just came out. Number one, Alabama undefeated, no surprise. Number two, Ohio State. Number three, Michigan. Number four, Clemson. And there's a huge rivalry game this week. Michigan State or Michigan and Ohio State. Apologies, I know I'm terrible. Michigan and Ohio State. And Wisconsin and Washington are looking in at the five and six spots. I think this year's college football playoff is going to be interesting. It um, is. Bama's still a force, though, so we'll see how they it do. Is. But it's, uh, it's crazy. Just a funny side note on that. There was actually a Twitter moment yesterday about whether or not Bama could beat the Browns. A lot of people were saying, I agree, they definitely could because I mean, it's no matter how good Bama is, you got like 10 to 15 NFL players versus 52 NFL players. Yeah. It so is. I don't think it could work out, but it's just an interesting – Interesting thing I saw. I mean, they probably put up a fight. I mean, the Browns are. It wouldn't be a blowout, but I don't, I don't think they could pull it off. No. But like I said before, special treat for the people. We have special guests. Standing right over here, we have Delvin Batiste, the NSIC Defensive Newcomer of the Year and First Team All Conference cornerback, hailing from Inland Empire, California. Uh, Delvin, how about you come up here and join us? We'll well, uh, I'll, get you, I'll get you a seat ready, Delvin. I'm just going to move over a little bit here. How y'all doing? You just uh, pick up that seat right there, Del. Chris. We're real people. We may, we may, you know, they got to pull up their own chair if they want to come on the show. So, uh, Delvin, just want to know how you feel about the team this year. You know, we're undefeated, 12-0, and 0, uh, just got a huge win. So, how do you feel about the team? Um, I like where the team is going. I feel like we're, we're bonding. We're getting close. We're hitting our peak at a good time. You know, everybody's playing good together. It seems like, you know, it's a lot of new dudes um, here together for the first time but it looks like we've been playing together for a couple of years yeah I agree um, I got a question for you Delvin uh, a lot of people know we're playing Harding this weekend um, they run a triple option so you know you're gonna have to be isolated a lot of the game you know we really don't know how much action you're really gonna get uh, you know how do you prepare yourself for a game like that knowing you know you're not gonna get a bunch of passes thrown your way this and that how do you prepare for that um, it's the same thing every week, you know. Uh, Azusa Pacific, they tried me the first play of the game, and after that, they didn't come my way. So I'm kind of used to it now, you know. The teams are doing their resume. They're checking their resume. They understand, like, I'm a lockdown corner. That's why Coach Jackson bought me in here to lock receivers down. So I just do, do my job, help my team, and if they try me, I just do my best to make a play on the ball. So a lot of people don't know. Um, you came here from NAU, Northern Arizona University, where you went straight out of high school. So, you know, just a quick question people might have. How is it adjusting going from one school to another? You know, a lot of people never transferred before. They don't know. You know, so make it more specific. How was it coming from NAU to here? Um, the transition was easier than what I thought it was going to be. You know, uh, the team here is just so accepting and so loving, and they just want you to be the best, and they just want to win. So um, they knew I was a good player, you know, and uh, – you know, every day there was in me about the playbook, you know, going over things. And so it was, it was easier than what I thought it was. Absolutely. So you, you are defensive newcomer of the year at the NSIC. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. How do you feel about that? Like, you know, it was a, it's a huge award. I mean, you came to this school first year and you're playing incredibly. And how do you feel about getting that award? 
Um, I'm just blessed, you know. I, I have to give a big shout out to my teammates, you know. They, they push me in practice. Shout out to all the receivers. The receivers in practice make it easier to guard the receivers in the game, so. I definitely see what you're saying on that one. Absolutely. And um, what made you, you know, just last question before we really wrap up. What was the, you know, signifying moment where, you know, you chose USF? Like, what was it that, you know, I know a lot of schools were talking to you after you left NAU. So what was it about USF that got you here? Um, really, to be truthfully with you guys, uh, it was wherever my buddy Marquise Mosley was going. Um, I didn't do much research about USF. You know, I just talked to the talk to Coach Tremaine Jackson a lot, but um, if they want Keese over there, it's going to win me over. So he did all the research and everything, and he came here a week before I came and told me everything was good, and then I just followed with him. I trusted my boy, and I knew this was a good place, you know. Coach Jack was on me every day, he telling me how much he wanted me and how much he needed me, so, um, yeah. All right, and just last thing before we cut it, um, this has been the Weekly Roundup. Delvin, how about you tell them where you're from? I'm from Naive, baby. Hi, Mom. This was the Weekend Roundup. I'm Tucker Stout. Jeff Harmon. Dalvin Baptiste. And that is it.